if something exists, then logic dictates it must have a center. A juicy middle with something exciting or intriguing at the core. So what might there be at the heart of our universe? How do we define it if our universe is infinite? Is there even a middle point at all? Let's find out as we ask what is at the center of our universe. Starting at number 4, Earth. Are we going to cheat with our very first entry? Why yes, indeed we are. There is one kind of universe in which planet Earth is located smack bang in the center. And that is our observable universe. But this doesn't mean that Earth is at the center of the actual universe. Because the center of the observable universe is basically anywhere you observe it from. The Andromeda Galaxy, the North Star, or even the Moon are all the center of their own observable universes. And in a way, you are the center of your own observable universe too. You just don't get all big-headed about it. It's really no big deal. And this is determined by the distance light has managed to travel since the Big Bang took place 13.8 billion years ago. However, this figure will change over time depending on several factors. The size of the observable universe first depends on the method we use to observe it, and in future we may be able to employ gravity wave or neutrino telescopes to look even further than we do today. However, while the observable universe is growing gradually at one light year per year, the universe itself is growing faster than this, because light simply cannot travel fast enough to keep up. Eventually, our observable universe will stop expanding while our actual universe continues to grow, with many galaxies we see today moving beyond our sight lines forever. But surely if the universe is expanding, we can see where it's growing from, can't we? Wasn't the Big Bang like an explosion? Can't we just work out where everything in the universe is hurtling away from, and then take a peek? Number 3. The Big Bang Where in the universe did the Big Bang take place? If we can find the answer to this question, Surely that means we can find out the location of the center of the universe, doesn't it? And then we'll finally know if our cosmos has a middle that's chewy, hard, or biscuit, right? Not really. Because when people picture the Big Bang, they imagine matter exploding into a void of empty space. And in this situation, you would have an identifiable center that you could investigate. But the Big Bang involved the expansion of space itself. As at the beginning of our universe, everything, including nothingness, was all condensed into an infinitely small point known as the initial singularity. When this singularity expanded, it didn't just grow outwards from a single point. The Big Bang took place everywhere. The universe is infinite today because it was born infinite, and infinity has no center. When we try to ask where the Big Bang began, the question is false. Because where is a location in space? And before the Big Bang, space didn't exist. But what if the universe stops expanding one day and instead collapses into the Big Crunch? Surely when this happens, we'll be able to find our universe's center. Even if it's the last thing we do before we're crushed into everythingness. Number 2. The Big Crunch The Big Crunch describes one of the many potential fates for our universe, whereby the expansion of space not only stops but reverses entirely, causing the collapse of the universe. So if we imagine this happening, it's not hard to picture a point in time where the walls are closing in and there's a specific center. But as usual, we non-sciencey folk have imagined this all wrong. As we said in our previous entry, 
The universe didn't expand like a balloon, and it won't deflate like one either. And nor will the contraction of the universe look anything like a reverse Big Bang as you might expect, as this would imply that it would contract in a uniform manner. Instead, a contracting universe would be all clumpy like cottage cheese. All matter would collapse into a series of black holes, and these would merge gradually over time to form a giant black hole containing everything in the universe. This black hole as an object could be described as the center of our universe, but since black holes are thought to be infinitely dense, you still wouldn't be able to pinpoint a physical center. One theory says that this big crunch scenario would lead to another Big Bang, and that this cycle of expansion and contraction has occurred repeatedly for infinite time. So, not only might the universe have no center, but time itself may also be infinite in both directions as well. And at number one, the Milky Way. To some people, it may feel like a cop-out to tempt you with the possibility of something magical at the center of our universe, only to go... <laughs> there isn't one. So, to alleviate your aching blue space balls, let's take a look at the insane stuff going on at the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way. Despite its name suggesting a dairy-based center, there is nothing creamy nor delicious about the heart of our star system. The Milky Way's core contains a supermassive black hole with a mass of 4.1 million Marklars. Oh, didn't know what the M with the tiny circle after it stands for. It's the symbol for solar mass, and since I couldn't find a pronunciation for it, I've decided to call it a Marklar. One Marklar is the equivalent of our sun's mass. And this supermassive black hole is 4.1 million Marklars, making it 4.1 million times the mass of our own solar overlord. We think the object's radius is about 17 light hours. And we've estimated this and the black hole's mass based on the stars we've seen orbiting it. However, it could be much smaller than we believe, with one calculation making it just 41 light seconds across. This may sound small, but it's still over 12 million kilometers wide. If it's as big as we think, it could be 18 billion kilometers across. But either way, we have no reason to fear it. This supermassive black hole is 26,000 light years away from our own solar system. In kilometers, that's 200 quadrillion, or 2 in 17 zeros. And far from being scared of such an object, we think the presence of such a supermassive black hole might be crucial to our Milky Way's existence. Without the black hole in the center, our spiral galaxy wouldn't have formed the way it did. Just as we orbit our sun, our entire solar system orbits this giant black hole. And we think every galaxy may even have one of these gargantuan black holes at its center. This makes you see black holes in a whole new light, if you'll pardon the pun. Because whereas sci-fi typically paints these mysterious objects as the devourer of worlds, it may be that they play a key part in creating galaxies, planets, and life itself. Where these supermassive black holes came from, we do not know. The most likely candidate is the collapse of a gigantic star, one which in turn created our galaxy. But how big could such a star possibly be? Might there have once been an object so large its collapse formed our own universe? And could anything exist that's bigger than the cosmos we're aware of, aside from your ginormous mother? We're going to explore this idea in our bonus video, What is Bigger Than the Universe? which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this, and indeed all of our bonus content which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then it's cool, we still love you, and we'll continue to provide the best content we can under YouTube's restrictions. 
as you'll see if you watch our recent video on how to travel to a parallel universe.